I feel like code security is going backwards in this like rush to get AI everywhere and into everything. I think we're like overlooking basic code security practices, like not letting anybody run arbitrary code on your server. Today we're talking about a tool that did literally this, the bug that was in the code, the way they fixed it and how the world, the world of AI is just making everything worse. I swear to God. But before we get into that, we talk about the video sponsor for today, me. Guys, I honestly believe that if you're a programmer trying to write fast, effective code, or you're a cybersecurity professional trying to stop your stuff from getting attacked, all of these require you to know the basic fundamentals of computers. My courses on the Level Academy teach you languages like C, networking in C, threading in C, assembly, and even a new installment, Rust, to learn the basics of how computers work. And Zero to Hero C programming will teach you the basics of the C programming language, the language that runs all other languages, and you can even learn arrays in C right now for free. Go check that lesson out. If you want to learn assembly, my ARM load operations lesson is also free. And I also have a free three-day C course that you can check out right here on the landing page. Guys, if you want to be a good programmer, you got to know the fundamentals. And where do you learn the fundamentals? On Low Level Academy. All right, guys, back to the video. See you there. Anyway, it all starts with Langflow. Now, again, I... The world of AI, I have many opinions on it. I have no problem with people using AI tools. I have no problem with people using AI to do their daily tasks. I have no problem with AI generated code, but all of these things have to be done by a person who is knowledgeable so they can check the math on the AI. It would be like if I were to do a surgery, but the surgery was led by AI. The AI, AI would tell me what to do, but guys, I'm not a surgeon. I'm just gonna listen to the AI. And when it says to put the scalpel in the eye for the appendectomy, okay, it's not gonna be pretty for the patient. So the tool here is Langflow. And this video is not me shitting on Langflow. I just find the scenario extremely funny. Langflow is one of those low code tools for developers that makes it easier to build powerful AI agents and workflows that can use any API, model, or database. Now, one of the things you can do to this Langflow element, this Langflow tool, is you can upload code that runs as an agent and you can just let it do things for you. And so this article got dropped, critical Langflow RCE exploited to let people hack AI servers. Uh, there was this endpoint called API V1 validate code that what it could do, it would run your code. So Langflow exposes an endpoint API V1 validate code designed to validate user submitted code in vulnerable versions. The endpoint does not safely sandbox or sanitize input, allowing an attacker to send malicious code to an endpoint that can be executed directly on the server. Guys, this, oh my God, this is code 101. Okay, when you are trying to validate that code works or you're letting somebody execute code on your computer, sandboxing and sanitization is like the first thing you think of from a from a security standpoint, right? On Low Level Academy, I let people do exercises on the website, not an ad for that right now. I'm just saying like I do that. And the way that I do it is I take their code and I push it to a completely different server that I don't even own and I say, you guys deal with it. I don't wanna fucking think about this because if I get this wrong, it will allow somebody to run code on my machine, they get access to my API keys and they take down the whole server, right? So this is like the first thing you should think about when you're making one of these systems where you're gonna run someone else's code, right? Let's talk about how this actually works. The article that I'm going through here is by Horizon 3 to AI. I don't wanna read the entire thing out, but basically this function in Python here, and it's public, the version, and you can go read it yourself. I'll put the link in the description below. This is validate.py, which is the utility that is used to validate Python code that gets ran. Now to give credit to Langflow, what I will say here is the problem they're trying to solve is very complex, right? I think what they're trying to do is make sure that the code that is submitted adheres to the import API that is needed to allow the code to run against like the Langflow API, right? So again, Python has a really weird problem where like there is no like ABI or like interface spec. You kind of just like have to make sure that your code matches the import statements. And then from there, if the functions line up correctly, it will work. So this is a hard problem to solve. And so the way they did this is basically the code goes through and it parses the abstract syntax tree of the submitted code and it looks for all of the import statements and make sure that those import statements match imports that are currently imported. And it also goes through and it executes all the 
function definitions in the code, right? So this is not the same as executing the functions, this just executes the label in Python that defines a function. The problem is what they forgot about, according to Horizon 3, AP, uh, Horizon 3 AI, is that in Python, a function definition also comes with a list of decorators. And a decorator, if you don't know what a decorator is, basically it's just a way to wrap a function to do something else before the function executes, right? So when you evaluate a function definition in Python, the decorator that the function is decorated with, so in this example, the decorator function, will be ran even though you don't call the function, right? So what this means is all they have to do is make a decorator that is an arbitrary payload, that payload will get ran during the evaluation of the function definitions, even though they don't end up calling the function. Crazy Pythonism here, but by doing this, they're able to basically upload a piece of code that uses a malicious decorator to get a reverse shell on the server and the server just hangs while the, the shell is running and they see that they're they're not root, which is good, but they actually are root. It's like they have group ID as, as root, which is not great. And they use this to get uh, interactive RCE and a bunch of other crazy stuff on the server. And ultimately this was patched right in uh, Langflow version 1.0, which I think actually properly fixes the uh, the problem here, but it's just crazy, man. So, you know, this was released by CISA on their, I think, known vulnerable, known actively exploited, which means that the CISA has seen this in whatever monitoring that CISA has. They've seen this being exploited in the wild, uh, and it's just, it's completely insane. Uh, my takeaways, right? I have no problem with AI as a concept, but if you find as a company or you find as a product you are rushing to use AI for the sake of AI, I guarantee you, you mi you're missing things and you need to look a little deeper. Also guys, I'm not gonna lie, just looking at the code that does the validation, the, the placement of the comments and the way that the code is broken up, this code itself feels AI generated. I know I'm making a lot of those claims recently. If I'm wrong, my bad, but again, it's just, I, I like the idea of AI. I don't like where AI is taking us. We gotta take this train that's going a million miles an hour this way and just turn it a little bit, a little bit to the right. Anyway, guys, if you like the stuff, if you like me doing these breakdowns or you just think I'm pretty, do me a favor, hit that sub button. I appreciate it. I love you. Go watch this video. See you later.